Hello everyone, my name is Iris Franz, Wu Today we're going to talk about factor price equalization theory and stopper samuelson theorem. These are really just extension of factor and dominant theory. So last time we were talking about there are two countries, US and China. US is relatively capital abundant and China is relatively labor abundant. And we are producing and trading two goods, aircraft and textile where aircraft is capital-intensive good and textile is labor-intensive good. So um, before trade, U.S. is producing and consuming on point A, um, A stands for autarky, on U.S. production possibility frontier, whereas China, they produce and consume on point A, A again stands for autarky, on China's um, production possibility frontier. And after two countries start to trade, they partially specialize. So U.S. moved from point A to point B prime. So now U.S. is producing more aircraft and less textile. Whereas China is moving from point A to point B, where they produce more textile and less aircraft. So you can imagine that this happens, that's going to cause the demand for capital to increase in the U.S. because now we are producing more aircraft and aircraft requires more capital. So demand for capital is going to go up, so the price of capital is going to go up. And because we're producing less textile and therefore the demand for labor is going to go down and that's going to cause our wage in the United States to go down. And in China, the opposite occurs because now they are producing more textiles, so demand for labor is going to go up and uh, that is going to increase their wage. Whereas the demand for capital goes down because now they are producing less aircraft, so the price of capital is going to go down. And uh, um, suppose this is the price of capital before trade. So we know China before trade, um, China is relatively labor abundant. So we can imagine the price of capital was higher. And in the U.S., because we're capital abundant, so before trade, the price of capital was relatively lower. And after trade, because the price of capital goes down in China and the price of capital goes up in the U.S., so you can see that eventually the price will equalize. That is the factor price equalization theory. And uh, same for wage, we know that before trade, because the U.S. Um, is relatively capital abundant, so um, the wage was higher, the wage for labors. And for China, because they are relatively labor abundant, so the wage in China before trade was lower. And after trade, because the wage of US goes down, let me explain here, and the wage in China goes up, therefore eventually the wage will equalize. And in reality, we know that there is no 100% um, wage equalization, but we know that's the direction. Indeed, our unskilled workers, their wage goes down, a lot of them lose their jobs. And in China, the opposite is happening. Their workers are get, um, requiring more pays because, well, they're um, after they work a lot and they will demand a better um, working condition and they will demand a higher wage. So indeed, the wage for unskilled workers in China is going up. And uh, um, Stopper Samuelson theorem tells you that there are winners and losers in the trade. So um, for the US, the losers from trade will be our unskilled workers because their wage goes down. And the winners of trade is the capital owner. So we can see the um, price of capital goes up, so capital owners they are winning from trade. And for China, um, the losers of trade is the capital owners because the price of capital goes down and the winners of trade will be their unskilled workers. And that is the stopper Samuelson theorem. And I hope this helps. See you next time.